Hey, I'm Damaris Alvarez from Cuba. Thank you for watching Blue Spires. This topic that we're discussing about our heart's desire. God was speaking through Ezekiel and saying that God was literally about to give us and to replace a heart of stone that was there and to replace it with a heart of flesh. But then if we look at things in the natural and we're understanding things in the natural, you, you would probably be already saying, well, I already have a heart of flesh so what is he exactly talking about replacing a heart of flesh with a heart of flesh but we know with the word of god we never read things just on the surface we have to get deeper and to get the deeper meaning and a deeper understanding of what god was actually seeing here i will give you a new heart he's saying i will give you a new heart God wants to give us a new heart. And if God wants to give us a new heart, that means the old heart, something's not right. Some things have been giving trouble. We have certain things inside that heart that should not be there or certain things that have been blocking the very flow because we know our heart is where every bit of blood needs to flow through and things need to change in our heart to send it to all the extremities of our body. So if things are not right there, things are getting clogged up, things are getting blocked, then we know, okay, then us and our bodies, we can't function at you know 100% and we want to function that way. So God was saying, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Right now in this season, we know it has been challenging to build up our spirit, man. And what I mean by that is how many times have we found ourselves in the word of God? How many times have we found ourselves praying on our knees, praying? How many times have we found ourselves just simply listening to worship music? How many times have we found ourselves in the company of our family or friends via whatever uh, platform to connect to it to say, hey, let's come together and let's pray. Let's come together and uh, let's do some Bible study. Let's get in the word of God. Have we been doing that? Or have our priorities been focused on simply getting by or getting through to the next day to survive? this dreaded pandemic we're in. But God is saying, I'm going to give you something new. He's the great physician. He's the one. We are the ones who have been formed and fashioned in his image and his likeness. So don't you think he would know exactly how everything works and everything functions? So God is saying he was willing to give us a new heart and put a new spirit within us because he knows that there's a heart of stone in our flesh and he wants to give us a heart of flesh. So heart, what does the word heart mean there in this context in Ezekiel? It means leb in the Hebrew, and that's L-E-B. And it means inner man. It means mind. It means imagination. It means inspiration. And the thing about it is that all those words we can apply right now to different circumstances of the way we feel and the way we see Life right now, we see our personal lives and then therefore the way we can apply the word of God to each and every situation. So the first uh, description, the first adjective uh, that, it, that it has there is inner man, inner man. The heart is, describes the inner man. And right now there's a lot of soul searching. There's a lot of introspection that is taking place. Because as we were discussing on uh, our 
video that we just did prior to youth meeting today is a lot of our priorities and a lot of the visions that we had for where our life would be have been cut short because of us being restricted, whether it is financially, whether it is physically, whether it is literally, we're emotionally bogged down by the pandemic and all of what's going on in the world and what's going on in Trinidad and Tobago. But God wants to build up that inner man. We know the flesh is weak and the spirit is willing. So that's why he says he put a new spirit within us. So when our flesh wants to pull us down, our spirit man's supposed to pull us up. That's where the Holy Spirit inside of us is supposed to rise up and be that comforter and be that encourager in this season. We see it also speaks of mind and we know the heart and the mind are one. So whatever is our heart's desires, it's our mind's desire. Whatever we think in our mind, it's our heart's desires. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So what have we been thinking? What is, what is going on up here? How are the... Uh, how, those, how, are the, how is the wheel turning inside our head, you know? How are the gears moving inside our head? What are we thinking in this season? The, the first uh, time that we, we entered this pandemic and, and the uncertainty and, and how scared we were. But now a year has gone and some months and now we're in a personally in Trinidad and Tobago, we are in a more, the most difficult season we've been in this pandemic and the thing about it is how then have we grown have we matured have we greater understanding because we see as a people as Sharon Tobago we haven't because of how bad it is now but we personally as believers in Jesus Christ and having uh the Holy Spirit our comforter and having the prophetic nature of God available to us so that we can know things ahead of time, are we in a better off position? Or are we in still in a situation where we are so burdened or so burgeoning in our heart for certain things that haven't happened or have been shut down? Have we even gone to God and asked God, well, God, is this what needed to happen now? Is this your desire for me, for my life? Or is this the idols in my heart desiring something to happen or to be expedited? And I was speaking to someone yesterday and we know let's wear like very microwave culture very my career society and we like things quickly we like things now uh, this is a season where things <laughs> my god things have definitely slowed down and then it begs the question if things have slowed down are we now seeing things at that slower pace and saying well god well i need to get closer to you now now is the time when because all the time, you know, we might say we're too busy, we don't have time to spend with God. Now that a space has opened up for us to spend time with God, we see that the excuse was never time. But the excuse was our personal lack of desire for the things of God. Because of those blockages in our heart, because of our heart being made of stone that it weighted us down so that the spirit man couldn't come alive and express and, and draw and pull on the things of God. And that's so true. Now we look at the word flesh. And the word flesh is basar. B-A-S-A-R, not B-A-R-C-A, -A, not barsa, but basar. Okay, and it means 
body but it also means of men of men flesh of men so god is giving us a heart of flesh god is giving us a heart that really describes the body of christ because that is supposed to be our desire to grow and to build the body of christ and of men meaning that the love of God is for us to express it to each and every person. That is the heart of God. God desires us to go forth, to go out to the ends of the earth and to preach the gospel. That is that heart of flesh. Because we know even in another part of the Bible, it says the, the flesh is at enmity with his spirit. And the thing is, if it's so oppositional and we can't give in, we can't succumb to the things of the flesh. And, and I will be the first person to put up my hand and say, it happens. But the thing about it, is it happening too often that it's overriding our relationship with God? Is it so, is the scales so much where it's flesh, flesh, flesh? spirit is you know what i mean right is it flesh 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 and spirit right because we're weighted down by the flesh right that we can't literally get in that place where god wants us to be in this season we are supposed to be such a pillar and such a foundation for the world now that is crying out for a savior from this pandemic, right? I see they want to find a savior in the government, a savior in the vaccine, a savior in this, a savior in that. And when they just, they need Jesus first and first, 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 first. We want handouts and we want this and we want that. But it's our personal responsibility first and paramount to get closer to God. That is the priority. If we look at the word stone, it is eben, E-B-E-N. And there are several similes. Basically, it, it, the stone is literally a, a figurative for the heart literally being uh, hard, hardened. It speaks of sinking in water and the hard heart. Are our, our heart hard? And you say, no, 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 no. I would never admit that my heart is hard. I just don't like to speak to God about anybody. I don't like to speak to anybody <laughs> at all. I don't like to communicate when I need to communicate. I see things going on out there, but it's basically I'm apathetic to it. Um, we see the numbers come in and it's just numbers. And once I home and I'm safe, everything is good. And that hardened heart is pushing us away from the things of God. It's pushing us specifically away from the voice of God. What did... Uh, the Bible say, and what did God say uh, to Moses about Pharaoh, right? When you're trying to get the Israelites free, God literally said, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He was hardened so that now he literally was disregarding the voice of God, which as God was speaking through Moses. Are we in a place where we can't discern the voice of God? And pain and heartache and strife and worries and everything is at our door. We have to desire to have that heart of flesh, that heart of that is malleable, that God could maneuver and shape as he desires according to times and seasons for us to grow and to mature. Are we willing? 
because instead of us going deeper in the things of God, we are weighted down by our stony heart and we can't climb up for air. Hmm. My God. All right, so we're going to Genesis 8, 21. When you're there, give me a thumbs up. Genesis, it's an easy book to find in the Bible. It's right after the table of contents. Genesis 8, 21. It's easy to find, but still can't find the scripture yet. Genesis 8, 21. Wonderful. Okay. Are we there? We got, oh yes, we're getting some thumbs up. We're getting some emoji thumbs up. It's part of the people that want their cameras on. All right. Okay. And it says, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said, in his heart, this is God, in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination, and what did we spoke about earlier, that heart, lab, means also imagination. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his what? Youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Hmm. Wow. So this is God saying in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Hmm. He will never again curse the ground for our sake. And he says, even though the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Now we, um, especially with each generation, have become very uh, desensitized to uh, global events and desensitized to uh, things that should affect us emotionally, uh, should affect us spiritually. And that is a lot because of the kind of media influence that we have right now, that a lot of the um, movies and shows we watch is a lot of violence and um, Especially since a lot of news as well, we see things on news and because it seems distant and far from us, it doesn't affect us personally. And therefore, if it doesn't affect us personally, then it doesn't warrant our interest. And in, in that, our heart then seems evil because Therefore, our imagination is 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 not, it's not a, a it's not there to see that people around the world are affected by different things, and that's only when things hit close to home, then do we uh, take a little notice. When when things get shaking at home, then we say, "Oh, okay, wow, this is real. This is hmm, my God." Then what? May I ask, are the intentions of our hearts? What is the imagination? What are the thoughts that we are thinking towards one another? Is it evil? Because I see, and once again, amazing. I was speaking to somebody yesterday. What are the thoughts we are thinking towards people? As I said again, as a man think it, so is he. And then we take these thoughts and we go and write it and type it in social media, in Twitter, in Facebook. And it's everything, it's all there open to see. And as we write that, we see that vile nature is literally what's in our imagination, what's in our thoughts, that we can be so aggressive and so evil to a person because they did us wrong. What are our actions and what are our reactions when things and harm and uh, evil comments come our way? 
I say we're very aggressive people. As soon as somebody hits, we want to hit back one time violently. And that is not a child of God. We saw in the garden when they were arresting Jesus, what a disciple, the first thing he looked to do was to go and chop off the ear of one of the soldiers. What was Jesus' response? He was like, whoa, take a chill pill. And he went and healed the God, the same God who was taking him away to be crucified, he healed him. For us in the natural, that seems very counterintuitive. But that is the way God works. God doesn't work in the way man thinks. And that is why we have to be synchronized with the heart of God so we know the way he thinks. We are to be Christ-like, not man-like. We are in the world and not of the world. You had to rebuke that Peter in the garden energy. Right? Yeah, we know Peter founded the church. Right? Yeah, great. Praise God for that. But Peter had some serious anger issues. Peter denied Jesus three times. So many times we have denied God in front of people. Oops, I don't want to say that, but it's the truth. And that's our heart intentions. What is our heart intention? What is our heart saying? What we do is that we put up this facade and we close up what really is happening so that people could see a certain representation of us that is not full on Jesus but not too much into the world. So we have this kind of lukewarm, uh, reserved nature. And that we can't. Is that either in or you're out? Is that either hot or you're cold? Once we get in to saying, hmm, it's not feeling kind of hot right now, but uh, that water is also not too cold. You have to therefore sense and discern, whoa, I'm getting into a danger zone, that meter, that spiritual meter in your head has to be going off. Be like, okay, I need to check myself right now. What really are the desires of my heart? We are to be like God. That's why we have to have that heart to heart. God is spirit. All right? We understand that. God is spirit. Therefore, we have to have that spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. That's why in the scripture it says in, in what we were reading in Ezekiel, new spirit, so we can have that spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication with him. We can't go with our flesh, spend five minutes and say, all right, God, I in your presence, let's go. Father, thank you for this. Father, thank you for that. Father, Father, Father. And God is like, I father for that. Because I come deeper. I desire more. I want more. That's all. That's, that, that's, that's the main thing, you know, is that God desires more. When we think that we have given enough, that's when we reach the flesh level. And God is like, okay, now what is my son doing? Now what is my daughter doing? what we're posting on social media, what we're not posting on social media, what are we speaking to our peers? What are we not speaking to our peers? It says a lot. Silence also speaks a lot. When we're supposed to speak up, once again with Peter, Peter denying Jesus. But what are our heart's desires? Let's go to Psalm 14. Psalm, Psalm 14. I had up Psalm originally, you know, and then I got rid of Psalm. The book of Psalm. Is it Psalms? Is it Psalms or is it Psalm? Ah, there, it's Psalm. Right, okay, so Psalm 14. 
When did it say, Amen, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. Amen. Your goodness, thank you, Nazia. Right, okay, Psalm 14, from verse 1, we're going to read. Ah, here we go. I, I, we know the scripture, right? It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. We are not any abominable snowmen inside here, okay? It says they are corrupt and there is none who does good. So even if you look in the natural and you see somebody doing good, in the eyes of God, they are a fool because they don't believe in God. Don't just look at things on the surface, you know. Don't just look at things on the natural. And don't be fooled for one second. What you are doing in your life is all you and none God. Because we're in danger territory there. You are going through something now where you are striving for uh, educational diploma and whatever. You are striving for promotion in your job. You are just looking to be happy in life in general. And you have certain uh, boxes and, and, and checks that you have to make and you have made those things. In no way, shape, or form is it you, but it is God doing it for you. We have to remember that. The gifts and talents you have have been given to you by God. But the thing is, what you do with it, your heart's desires and your intents of those gifts, of those fruits, really tells if you are on that right track, on that highway of holiness, with the love of God, in your relationship with God, in your walk with God, as you go forward in life. A fool citizen says in their heart, there is no God. That word fool is Nabal, N-A-B-A-L, not Nadal. It means wicked, it means vile. We spoke earlier about that vile nature of social media and, and how we could get uh, with one another and how quick it could go from zero to 100. And the way we speak with, I was really with something that was happening <laughs> on social media last yesterday and day before probably, or just yesterday. I was really, um, I couldn't believe, you know, people, that's how they speak and that's how they think in regards to, as a topic, if you're on, if you're on Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because, yeah, right? Um, and it, it speaks, that word as well means your acts, your, the way you act or your intentions. So that fool, his, that person's intentions. So what, could we come back to speaking about intentions again? What is that person's intentions? You are going out to help somebody, right? Or you are not going to help somebody. What is the intent in what you are doing? Is it for self, self praise? Or is it because of the goodness of your heart you want to help and you want to uh, spread the gospel in that way? These are questions we really have to ask. Next scripture we're going to, ladies and gents. Fortunately, we're sticking in the book of Psalm. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And we are reading from verse 7, I believe. Shouldn't take that long to get there. We're still in the book of Psalm. Are we there? Yes, wonderful. We're there. We've got there. I don't know. I'm just saying because I, I think I response. Yes, yes, we're there. Wonderful. Okay, Psalm 
7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. And we have to kind of read that, you know, with um, those, um, those guys who do the trailers for movies. You know, we have to cry out here. Yeah. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. It's like you have to do a kind of theatrical way about it. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. So this is David speaking to God. And he's saying, my heart, my heart said to you, we were speaking about, again, the heart and mind being one. So his heart was saying, your face, Lord, I will seek. This is after God saying, seek my face. What God has been saying throughout this pandemic is seek my face. Can I get an amen and, and somebody in the background playing a little piano, you know, a little organ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Seek my face. God is saying. Seek my face. And therefore our heart is supposed to jump out. Because why God is saying seek my face. Is he saying seek my face. Because things are challenging right now. And God would have said this after time. Seek my face. Are we in that place where we can cry out to God to then hear God say, seek my face? Or is it a situation where, oh my God, we go dead. I'd let me go and cry out to God. Now is the time in the 99th hour. God, you go come true. Because then what David goes on to say is, do not hide your face from me. The first thing we like to say and cry out when things are not going well is, God, where are you? God, where are you in this situation? Do not turn your servant away in anger. Because then we believe God vexed with us. God is angry with us. And the thing is, we've been doing these, we've been succumbing to the idols in our heart all the time. Huh? All the time. It's just one time we do something really bad. And it's like, God, I hope you're not angry with my God. Lord, I'm sorry, I will cry out to you now. And there's a kind of false sense of emotionalism happening there. God give you a little reprieve. The mercy of God comes, falls upon you. But then we're not delivered. We're not set free. That idol is still in our heart that we go back. Let's say we give it two weeks and we go back and it happens again. How many of us have that happen to? And don't raise your hand in your switched off camera zoo. Our intentions are aligned with our hearts. So if the idols are in our heart, therefore our attention, our intentions, and therefore our attention is aligned to those idols. What we have to say is God, come and wash away those idols. God expose those idols. So therefore, then you can wash away those idols. Let's go to Psalm 26. It's right there. It's next to Psalm 27. Psalm 26. And we're going to read from 1 to 12. And I really want you guys to listen and those with a prophetic eye and a prophetic ear will be able to. I don't know why I've been pointing to the wrong body parts all the time. These are my eyes. These are my ears. Okay. All right, so let's read Psalm 26. 
Vindicate me, O Lord. Hey, David is, that's why. What does the Bible say? David was a man after God's own heart. Jeez, who is the most important person we have to strive to, to be like in the Bible? Jesus. And then David, right? Okay. Vindicate me, O Lord. <laughs> it's a kind of build up trick question thing. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Many of us, when we face the tests, the trials, the tribulations, I could say a majority of the time, it's not us saying, God, examine me, God, bring on the test, God, prove me, Lord. God, yeah, bring it on. Satan, bring it on. I had the breastplate of righteousness. I had the shield of this and the helmet of that. And... Hmm. Be careful. Be careful what you ask for because they have a brother called Job that went through a lot. And you <laughs> don't ask for certain things if you know you can't take it on. Try, because it goes on to say, try my mind and my heart. The heart and mind are one. Try my heart and try my mind. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I have not, and here we go. Those of you who have ears will hear and prophetic eyes will see. I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with the hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house. Right now, we in our houses physically, and we don't like that habitation going on right now. Because this one fighting with that one, the next one fighting with that one, who could shout higher, who could shout softer, who could felt this and throw this and... Listen. You want to know where the enemy wants to get at you? And the place where your glory dwells. I think we're going to stop there for now. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our actions are therefore representative of the Holy Spirit. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Therefore, all we do externally and all we feel internally is supposed to represent that which we serve. If we re react in anger, we have to then see, oh my God, who around me has seen the way I have acted. And the thing about it is that God is saying right there in your space, whether it is in your room, your living room, your car, wherever is that space, God desires us with our body because we can't physically be at church, our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit has to be where we desire and love to be in the habitation of the presence of the Lord. And in so doing, we will see deliverance. We will see those idols begin to melt away. We will see the spirit man build up and we will see the flesh succumb to the blood of Jesus. And that's what we want to happen. That's what we have to desire. That's what we have to desire, ladies and gents. Right. 
So as we were speaking about fruit earlier, we're just going to take a sidebar and speak about that a little bit. So we, we, we're going to come back. No, we will end. We will go back. We will end with, with uh, speaking about the fruit. So we're not sidebarring it. Psalm 11. Because I want to talk about understanding that the, the, the heart of God is there for everyone. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. 11. 11. All right. Okay. Are we there? Psalm 11. Are we reading from verse 14? Verse 12. Verse 12. We read it from verse 12. And it says, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, You will not require an account. And it goes on to say, But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief. And uh, sorry, and to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the help of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you are find you until you find none. So what this scripture is saying is that even the wicked who renounces God, even that same fool that we were speaking about earlier. Is not accountable or believes they are not accountable to the things of God. So that is why right now we see globally, as has happened for a year and it's happening still, people believe that their actions, that they're not accountable to authority, whether it is natural government authority or accountable uh, to God. Why? Because they be their heart intentions. Their vile intentions. So they believe because of, and it's, let me tell you, it's pride. Huh? They could go around masks less. They don't have to be vaccinated. They don't have to social distance. This virus is not real. Because for them, they are not accountable in their actions toward anybody else. They're so filled with pride and they're so selfish in nature. And that is where we have to see things as it is in the natural and get into our prayer closets and pray against what is happening. That is our that is for me, and I'm saying this to you as a prerequisite for being a believer in Jesus Christ is being a prayer warrior. Be having that ability to just get on your knees and pray. Because guess what? When you are praying for somebody, somebody's already praying for you. Forget your troubles. Forget, forget everything that is happening around you that is not going your way right now. When you are selfless, and that's where the fruits come, the fruits, the fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, patience, gentleness, kindness, and all the others. When God sees that selfless nature, that meek nature, my God, he does, that's all seeds that we are sowing, where God is going to produce victory for us in everything in our lives. Hmm. But you see, the thing about it is that God still wants to save the fools, you know. He still wants to save the fools. But if we are doing the things correctly and how it should be, then we would see that. Uh, as I spoke a while ago about uh, being kind, or was it professing the love of God offensively 
when I say offensively, I mean ag ag aggressively, meaning that we press forward with love. When somebody is, is, is angry and vile against us, all we could do is give them love and give them love and give them love and give them love. Because as I said, it's literally counterintuitive in their minds like, wow, I am being so evil and vile to this person, but all they could do is show me love. They would get taken aback by that. They'd be like, what is wrong with this person? And you'll see how they, they quiet them. Because you have to understand that we're dealing with spirits. We're always dealing with spirits here. Okay? It's a spiritual battle. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Remember that as we are back in our homes with families, with, with, with uh, loved ones, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, principalities and powers, rule of darkness, and wickedness in high places. Okay? That's what we're fighting against. Always remember that. Blessed are the peacemakers. Just God, you say, God, just shower your love upon me. So when that love is upon you, that's what you exude. That's what you reflect. You'll see things change. Right. So as I was saying, we're speaking about fruit. So let's go to Matthew. Uh, and this is our last scripture for today. Yeah. Yes, I could get off this Zoom call. Yay, finally. Matthew 7, and we're reading from verse 15. Matthew, I believe, is the first book of the New Testament. Ah, yes, it's right after the page that says New Testament. That was correct. Matthew 7, and we're reading from verse 15. We're speaking about fruit and we're speaking about being careful of people's intentions. We speak, we're speaking about being careful of people's, uh, how they are exposing their hearts toward you. Let's read on. So 7.15, it says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Wow. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. We've all heard that scripture on multiple occasions. Do we know what that scripture means? Let's find out. Inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. So we know a lot of 2020 and 2021, a lot of preaching has been going on on social media. And we say praise God to that. But then the thing is, we have to then be careful to discern what really is God speaking, what is motivational speaking, and what is literally false prophecies coming out because we've seen a whole heap of nonsense being said on social media there's the end of the world you know and things along that line and are we succumbing to every uh post that's on social media every video that comes out on social media and when I say succumbing, meaning that are we just taking it for what it is and, and not proof checking it, not validating it, not going in the word of God ourselves to really see, oh, is, is this what this person saying? Can I corroborate this in the word of God? And I'm just saying, be careful, be careful. What is the heart's intentions of these people? Because by their fruit, you will know them. By their fruits, you will know them. 
if we see, and here's the thing about it, uh, God uses the very odd and unusual and unexpected person we see it throughout the Bible. But then if we are so much, the word of God says, again, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. If we are so much likened unto the world in the way we look, in the way we speak, in the way we move, then we look at that tree and is it bearing good fruit? Because if we so much looking and sounding like the world, then how then can the actual word of God come through and cut through and have the impact it's supposed to have? How many of us have watched stuff and we said, wow, this is a great spectacle. This is amazing. Could you see that background? Do you see what that person is wearing? Wow, do you hear all the arrangement of instruments, etc.? And we totally forget exactly what is the substance of what that person is speaking about. So this is where we have to see that, okay, this tree, this tree, is it there just for good looks? Or is this tree there to produce the fruit that I need for sustenance to carry on? Because we can't just be hollow uh, and, and it literally a facade where the front of the building looks great, but the back of the building is really broken down. That's not good enough. And we as believers of Jesus Christ, as we spoke of earlier, have to take account and have to be accountable, especially for pastors, to be accountable for the flock. We as leaders in our own right to be accountable, those of us who are older siblings, those of us who are um, parents in our own right, we have to be accountable for what we are speaking, how we are behaving around those who are under us. And the thing about it is that we know them by their fruit. Therefore, we have to be producing fruit. Our walk with Jesus Christ cannot be one where we are not producing fruit. How do we produce fruit? By constantly being uh, filled with the nutrients. God is raining down. God's sun is shining upon us. But if we are closed up, away from where the sun could hit us, away from where the, the rain could come and go down into the, the soil and and, and uh and get to the roots to build us up to therefore to then produce these fruits. Then what are we really doing as believers in Jesus Christ? So let our hearts, our hearts intentions be synchronized with God so that the fruits that we produce are good fruits and not rotten fruits. That the people around us can see that they are around a person that they can benefit from. And if we have those trees around us that are producing rotten fruits, it's time for us to uproot ourselves from there and be planted somewhere with good soil. And are we willing, because some of us, we are so comfortable where we are. Hmm. We're in comfort zones. The couch potato mentality. God, let your Holy Spirit come. Let your presence come to me. Let that word come to me. When God is saying we have to go to him, seek his face. 
run after him. In this season, we have to be held accountable because tomorrow's promise to no one. We're seeing it in Trinidad literally right now, face to face with us in our lives. It's hitting close to home. Last, last year it wasn't hitting that close to home, but now it's hitting close to home to each and every one of us. So we, we have to get things right with God and press in and press in and press in and press in. And not and not be selfish and say like um, everything revolves around me and, and everything revolves around my life and I have to focus on my life. Let's let's try to be our brother's keeper in this season. That's what God is looking at. Are you going to be your brother? That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, man. Are we going to be our brother's keeper? By their fruits, you would know them. Okay. Wonderful. So let's just all agree in prayer right now. Let's bow our hearts and lift our hands and really be in a place of surrender so that we understand that our hearts, desires, our hearts, intentions are that which are synchronized with the heart of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship you and we praise you for each and every person that is on right now and for even those who will be listening at a later time we thank you oh god that you have moved we thank you oh god that you have spoken and revealed your heart to your sons and your daughters and i pray oh lord father that they will take and they will chew and they will discern and they will apply each and every word to their lives father as they grow and as they mature in you father in your word in the things of god father that they understand the desire to separate flesh from spirit lord father that they desire to get deeper in things spiritually 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 and as they strengthen themselves spiritually god then you will begin to open doors for them it's not the other way around father that lord father as they surrender and sacrifice flesh right now on that altar as they sacrifice flesh as flesh is god as you let your fire even right now begin to rain down let your fire begin to burn let your fire as they give themselves away as a living sacrifice as they consecrate themselves and they make this covenant to go deeper in you right now in the name of jesus god that you will burn and burn and burn and burn and you burn away the idols from their hearts lord father Every idol, Lord Father, that is corrupt in nature right now in the name of Jesus. Every idol of oppression and suppression. Every idol of anger, of bitterness, of resentment, of jealousy. Every idol of greed, of lust, Lord Father, of perversion. Lord Father, every, every idol, Lord Father, even right now that is consuming them lord father and is a is a stumbling block between them and you right now in the name of jesus lord you burn it up you burn it up you burn it up right now that they understand oh god that the only way that they are to grow and they are to see the desires of their heart come to fruition lord father is being in service to you is being in service to you Right now, Lord Father, you open their prophetic eyes and their prophetic ears, Lord Father, to be synchronized with your heart right now in the name of Jesus. That today, 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 that they won't leave it, Lord Father, for another time because tomorrow is promised to none, Lord Father, but that they understand that now is the time to rise up. Now is the time, Lord Father, that they are accountable for the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. That they clean out the temple. They clean out the temple. Let your breath, let your wind begin to blow in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your blood 
touch them from the grounds of their head to the soles of their feet, that they will be protected in the natural. And Lord Father, that they will begin, Lord Father, to be solidified in the spirit realm, Lord Father, to begin to move and to move and to move and ascend and mature in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Father, that supernatural knowledge and wisdom will come upon them and common sense, Lord Father. But in all they're getting, they get understanding in this season in the mighty, in mighty name of Jesus. Understanding will come upon them right now. Understanding of times and seasons, Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. As they open your word, as your word will come, my God, as your word will come alive to them, as they actually open your word and it comes alive, they will see the blueprints for the rest of their life. They will see the instructions with where they must go and the desires that are synchronized and the will and the will, your will, Father, for their lives will be fulfilled in due time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.